5090 laptops, half the performance of a desktop. Efficient? Yeah. Fast? Not really. The 9070 XT PCB leaked. It looks like a Sapphire Pulse clone. Is it the real deal or recycled parts? We'll see. NVIDIA teamed up with Denny's. Pancakes, sausage, and a side of graphics card history. And scammers are turning 3090s into fake 4090s. I'll show you how to spot the fakes. You know the drill, let's get into it. Now, this is a question that you see a lot. People are looking to get into gaming, getting a gaming PC, and they go, maybe I'll just get a laptop instead. But you are always sacrificing something by going mobile, and this is no different. Check this out. Reviewers report GeForce RTX 5090 for laptops is 50% slower than the desktop version. Quite a difference there. The RTX 50 laptop launch was a bumpy road. According to Tom's Hardware, they reported problems obtaining basic information, such as availability dates of the laptops that they were testing, not to mention limited access to these systems before embargo. So most of the reviews seen on day one were of the razor blade systems. Highly popular, you see them all over Best Buy. This laptop does not utilize the RTX 50 series to its maximum potential as the TGP is limited to 160 watts. Notebook Check currently has a similar laptop from ASUS and can conclude based on this that the RTX 5090 offers half the performance of the desktop model. From the glass half empty perspective, the raw 15 to 30% boost is rather minor for a GPU generation three years in the making, as the mobile RTX 5090 can be 50% slower than the desktop counterpart as shown by these benchmarks. Check this out. Dota 2 Reborn, this is a 1080 uh, running on Ultra. Uh, this 5090 Solid from Zotac, uh, this is the, obviously the desktop card, coming in at around 291 FPS. The Razor Blade running at the quote unquote 5090, coming at 137 FPS. 53% difference in performance on that Dota 2 Reborn benchmark. That's a wide, wide gap. And I mean, are we surprised? Is anyone surprised by this? Let me know, guys. Uh, I, I think it's fairly common knowledge that your laptop version of the GPU is going to perform worse than the desktop version. That's fairly well known. Now, is it fairly well known that it's a 53% difference? It apparently is on the 50 series, or at least on the 5090 for these laptops. Let's take a look at some of the comments, see what you guys are saying. And this is a funny one. Look at the bright side. It'll only be missing half the ROPs the desktop parts do. <laughs> anyone have a, a card with missing ROPs? I'm curious if anyone in the comments has seen that. Is this surprising? Why is this news? Laptop GPUs are always less performant. And every generation, we have the same talking points. And the naming scheme has been such for three generations now. It's kind of what we're talking about, right? But then again, here's the reality of the situation. We assume that everyone has the same level of knowledge that we might have when it comes to PC hardware, laptop versus desktop. Now, the more sinister thing of this really is the naming scheme. Uh, you know, you're calling it a 5090 the average consumer is going to expect 5090 performance because of all the marketing buzz that's been generated around that card. I have a mix of people saying, of course, this is a laptop. What did you expect? Uh, guys, let me know if you're planning on getting a new laptop. I know some people are due for a refresh here. Let me know where you guys are at on this. And oh my gosh, we have some more leaks. The AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT reference PCB design has leaked out. And it appears like it's a Sapphire Pulse or something very, very close to it. The AMD reference design is something we all wanted to see in real life, but the company decided against launching its own model to the market. Instead, AMD opted to work with partners on their cards, which is not a bad thing. Most Radeon launches were short on supply because AMD prioritized its reference design. All this time, all stock went to AIBs who had more or less success selling the card. So the only downside of this deal is that AMD can't dictate the price directly. Okay, so this is very interesting because apparently at some point, a card that looked similar to the reference design shown in the renders was actually produced. It does not look the same. In fact, it looks much more basic. Okay, so let's check out some of these photos. This is undoubtedly an AMD board because of how AMD names are reference designs. My big question is, is AMD going to be producing their own variation of the 9070 XT? What we're looking at here, this person took some photos that confirms that the card does indeed have driver support and ships with official clocks. It's a fully fledged RX 9070 XT. Is it an engineering sample? Not sure why the backplate has a nearly 10 year old Radeon logo. There's a lot of weird things about this. Very, very interesting. 
AMD reference design may be coming for the 9070 XT. Do we think that's going to be a thing? Let's see what the comments has to say about this. To all AIB board makers, stop with the half thickness video cards. Two and a half slots is effectively three slots. Just use all three slots. Thoughts? That's a hot take, kind of. I mean, it does kind of make sense. If you're gonna use two and a half, why not use a full three? This depends on what your build looks like, right? I got a lot of comments on the last video, by the way. I asked a lot of you about the 9070 XT, a ton of you on this card. Um, so thank you for uh, giving me some insight. Overall, I didn't read a single comment of someone that was disappointed in the purchase. Uh, very, very interesting. Is AMD gonna end up coming out with a reference design of the 9070 XT? It's a banger card. I don't see why not. Have you ever wanted to eat like a graphics card genius? Well, listen here, Nvidia just dropped breakfast bites at Denny's. Uh, and this is uh, by the way of CEO Jensen Wong. It's his favorite menu item, check this out. Nvidia breakfast bites are now available at Denny's. If you want to experience the breakfast of geniuses. Now I have a plan just real quick to go into Denny's and order this and potentially record it, maybe for the channel. It would be kind of fun. But I'm worried that there will not be enough allocation. Scalpers back behind the Denny's will be selling these. Bre you see what I'm saying? You get the joke I'm trying to make. Listen, if you want to try out the Breakfast of Geniuses, Breakfast Bites was first seen at GDC 2025. It's now available at Denny's. This is the first product of 2025 with the NVIDIA name on it that is readily available. Bruh. Ain't that the truth? Uh, it's purchasable at the expected price, uh, 4,000. Oh, wait. Oh, sub $5. What? This is the most most affordable NVIDIA product of all time. A uh, sub $5 breakfast of 520 calories made up of mostly flour, processed meat, and sugars. Yay. Yummy. Jensen, for a lot of people that maybe don't know, uh, had worked at Denny's. What's the meal look like? It's right here. Check this out. Four sausage links. Mm. Four buttermilk silver dollar pancakes, maple syrup, and it's under five bucks, 520 calories. This dish powered me through my long shifts and eventually inspired the birth of NVIDIA at a Denny's booth right here in San Jose. It's going to be around till May 13th uh, or until it, supplies run out. Scam alert. We got a new scam, guys. New scam involving the RTX 3090 graphics cards being rebranded and sold as an RTX 4090. If it looks too good to be true, it's most likely a scam. I'm just going to say that right up front, but let's let's jump into it. Scammers have a new and old target, the ultra expensive RTX 4090 graphics cards. A recent scam in China involves shipping RTX 4090 branded cards that actually contain RTX 3090 GPUs. This is not the first time such cheating has occurred. The scam involves polishing the die and relabeling it using a laser to imitate official mark. At this point, when you're going through the laser and you're polishing things, how hard is it to just, like, you've got all this equipment, can you just make a product? There's a lot of money in scamming. Uh, it's a sophisticated scheme that can easily mislead buyers, especially since the GPU size alone doesn't clearly indicate which chip is inside. However, the capacitor layout Around the GPU is a clear sign that something is off, which most people aren't going to check until they're like, hey, something's not right with my graphics card. I, the capacitor layout doesn't quite make sense. Like this is a scam aimed at ripping off people that are just trying to get a good GPU, play some games on. I hate this a lot. I hate that this is a thing. In one case, the issue was only discovered when a fake graphics card was sent in for repair and examined by a technician. Buyers who purchase used cards from individuals may not realize they've been scammed, especially since verifying the graphics card requires removing the entire cooler. Like I said, who's going to go through all the trouble to verify that the capacitor layout is in fact what it's supposed to be? Uh, apparently now you must because of people like this. Thanks. You've ruined it for everyone. The card was listed for 550 bucks. That alone is a reason to say, hey, maybe... Maybe something's off here. The $550 4090, uh, you don't see those a whole lot. Dig into the comments. NVIDIA Conforce with 420 fraud cores. <laughs> nice. So a couple comments in here saying, hey, you know what? 550 bucks, that's still not bad, even if it is just a 3090. Uh, this is a great point that is made here. It's not that simple. It's a dead 3090-3080 core soldered onto the 4090 PCB with fake VRAM. They aren't even soldered properly to the board. 
contacts, which won't make all the needed electrical connections. You're not going to get the performance that you think you would get out of like an actual 3090. It's not like, oh, it's just it's the same as a 3090. No, this thing has been drugged through hell and back. But it at least has all ROPs? Question? One can only hope. All right, guys, it's going to do it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I noticed a bunch of you are not subscribed still, which makes me super sad. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, a lot of comments on the microphone last time. Hopefully it sounds a little bit better this time. Uh, I appreciate all the comments. I read all of them. And uh, if you guys you know, have anything that uh, you would like me to talk about in uh, other videos this week, I'm going to try to do three of these every week. Let me know what you think, what you'd like me to talk about and cover. More to come this week, but make sure you're subscribed so that you can see it for yourself. We'll see you next time.